Shalom, Yasharala. I want to give infinite honors to our Heavenly Father and our great King, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rekakadash. Uh, Shalom is the way you say peace in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Yasharala is the way you say Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the blessed tongue. Yahweh is the name of our great power, our uh, creator, whom the world economically calls God. God is a title. Yahweh is his name, which means he is, he exists. Bahashem means in the name. Uh, it's translated to in the name in English. The way you, you, you said in the ancient Paleo Hebrew is Bahashem. All right. And Yahweh Shai is the name of our great king to whom the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ. All right. And his name means he is our, div our deliverer. All right. He delivers. All right. Because he's the captain of our salvation. All right. Rekha Kodash is the way you say Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo, paleo tongue. Okay. And when you read uh, the book of Maccabees, it plainly tells you words that are spoken in the ancient paleo tongue have more power than uh, words in the, the languages of the nations that we call out to. I also want to give double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, to whom the Most High has poured his spirit on, on in these last days to feed the flock. He, he said he would give you pastors according to his own heart to uh, feed us with knowledge and understanding. And that's the elders of Great Millstone who worthy their double honors according to the book of 1 Timothy, the fifth chapter, okay? And I want to give a, uh, a double shallow warm to my uh, fellow laborers in Yahweh's shop pushing this truth across the four winds with all fear and trembling in these last days, seconds of time, all right? Peace and blessings to the whole four elect, all right? Now, I bought out that uh, blessed scripture because I mean, history repeats itself. And, and, and when you read the scriptures, all right, it's basically history repeating itself over and over and over again because Israel is a stiff necked people. So I would, Heavenly Father, say, look, look at the things that transpired in ancient time past, things that happened before time, and learn from them because a wise man learns from a foolish man's folly. All right, if I see a wise man, stick his hand in a bee's nest. I don't have to get stuck, stung by a bunch of bees to learn not to put my hand in the bee's nest. I can learn from his folly, okay? And so that's what this scriptures is about, us learning from the folly that we committed in ancient time past because we are those people, all right? Because reincarnation is real, all right? So with that being said, when you read the scriptures, you always see Israel go off. And what does the Most High do? He bring a, another nation to lord over us rigorously and put us in a position of servitude. I mean, we were under the Midianites. He raised up Gideon and, and had Gideon, Gideon to put the spirit on the nation to uh, repent and call out to the Most High. All right. During the time of the, um, Samson, the Philistines was oppressing us. He raised up Samson to be a judge and to uh, call Israel to repent. To come back to the Most High and He'll deliver us, and it just happened over and over and over again. All right, and the captivity's got longer and longer and longer. Okay, so we need to learn and read these old stories, these blessed stories in the Scriptures, and learn what not to do from uh, our uh, ancient, our uh, ancestors' uh, misfort misfortunes, their folly. Okay. And right now, I'm about to go into the times we went through famines and why the Most High brought famines upon us and what we had to do to come out of those famines, okay? Because a famine is coming to America, all right? And America's going to be judged, and one way he's going to um, destroy this place and break it down is through famine pest, and pestilence, okay? When a famine comes, then pestilence comes right here after, all right? People get sick and de disease follow after, man. Okay? And this is going to be the greatest famine since the earth been in play. The calamities that the Most High is about to bring on the earth in these last de days, seconds, and times is going to be greater than all of the calamities before. Them. Here in America, it's about to get nasty. All right? So without further ado, I'm going to get into the scriptures. All right? I'm going to start off in the book of Ezekiel. Uh... 
I've been in this brother book a lot lately. All right. This is Ezekiel 7 and 3. Now is the end come up on, upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways. You see? And the way the Most High judges, when you read the scriptures a fourth time, he brings famines against us. He brings other nations against us. He brings pestilence against us. And a lot of times he sent evil angels against us, demons against us, the plague us. Okay. And will recompense thee all thine abominations. And, and, what, and what are the abominations? Our people uh, don't follow the dietary laws. They don't follow the land laws. All right. They don't follow um, the garment laws. You know, and some of them we can't follow, but we're here to rehearse the righteous acts. If you tell them right from wrong, they don't take heed. Like somebody told Boosie that he shouldn't be eating pork. He said, I'm going to eat pork. God ain't going to tell me what not to eat. All right. So the Most High is going to bring evil upon him and his household. Okay. And my eyes shall not spare thee. Neither will I have pity. Okay. Because when he brings hell up on our people, they're going to want to call Yahweh Shema Washah. But he's not going to have pity on them. Okay. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee. And thy abomination shall be in the midst of thee. And you shall know that I am Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah. Thus saith Yahweh, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. And end is come. The end is come. It watches for, for thee. Behold, it is come. Okay? So the Most High is about to bring evil upon the, on his people, all right? And he's about to bring a sharp sword against his people. And that sword don't necessarily mean a, a gadling gun, a slingshot, a bow and arrow, so on and so forth. All right? It, it, that sword could be famine, okay? And that's what I'm about to get into. And famine is the worst way to die. Let me get that. All right? Out of all the ways you can die, famine is the worst. Because why we say that? Because Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai says so. This is Lamentations chapter 4, verse 9. And it reads, They that be slain with the sword, are better than that that be slain with hunger. So if somebody blow your brains out or uh, hit you with a, a, a dagger like the Sakari used to do, hit you with a dagger, hit you in your fifth rib with a sword or so on and so forth, it's better to die that way than to die with, from hunger because starving to death is a long, grievous death. You all right? If somebody hit you uh, in the right spot with a... a, a a sword or a dagger, man, you could bleed out in probably five to ten minutes. You know what I'm saying? If they hit you in a vital place, you could bleed out in two minutes. You see what I'm saying? But hunger is a long, grueling death. Your body starts eating eating at itself. You get weak. You get feeble. All right? You start hallucinating, going blind and shit. Okay? You, you don't die overnight. It, it's a it, you, it takes you a, a, peer, a long period of time to die, but you feel yourself dying slowly. You feel yourself getting weak. Your body aches, okay? In fact, hunger is so bad, a person that's starving to death and been, star and been starving for a while, hunger is so fucking bad. Once they finally get food, if you just give them a big piece of chicken or a big piece of steak, their body so weak, it'll regurgitate it. Like when a person starves, they, they can't just go eat a full course meal. All right. Their stomach, their stomach is going to be fall, be small. So they're, they're and, and weak. And if you, if you give them some solid food, they'll throw it up. That's how bad hunger is. All right. You got to start them off with a liquid diet to build them back up to even eat a steak. Okay. For these pine away, stricken through for what of the fruits of the field. OK. So to, to die from hunger is the worst way you can die. All right. And we about to go into time things of four time and seeing what happened when famines came upon our people and the things that they did. OK. So. I'm going to go in the uh, second Kings. The sixth chapter. Start at the 21st verse. 
All right. This is things were in the fourth time. This is this happened in live action in ancient time past. All right. This is second King six and 24. And it came to pass. You know what? Before I read this. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy. I'm going to go to the law. Deuteronomy 28 and 52. All right. Because what we were about to read in second Kings is a prophecy being fulfilled. But guess what? It, it happens in every era. It happens in in every uh, age, okay? And it's going to happen in our age, in our day and time. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 52. And he shall besiege you in all thy gates. That's talking about our enemies. Preferably our arch enemies, um, the Idumeans, the so-called white man, Esau. Until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trusted, all right? Throughout all thy land. And he will besiege thee in all thy gates through all thy land, which Yahweh thy power have given thee. All right. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which Yahweh thy power have given thee in the siege and in straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. And that's what's going to happen in these last days. You're going to have Gurgle troopers, UN soldiers. All right. You're going to have. American soldiers, all right? They're going to come in the hood near you, in suburban and near you, wherever an Israelite dwell, and they're going to besiege you. And they're going to come and, and, and surround you and take you out of your houses and throw you in concentration camps. And they're not going to feed you, man. They're not going to worry about you having substance, all right? They're going to be doing the will of your high about Shema because they're going to have demons on them. And the most high create demons uh, to appease his wrath, man. And they love to appease his wrath, man. All right. So you about to see this prophecy being fulfilled in what I'm about to bring out in um second Kings. This is second Kings, the sixth chapter, the 21st verse. And it reads, and it came to pass after this, Ben had King of Syria, gather all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. All right. Samaria is um, a town in Israel. That, that's Ephraim. I think that's what uh, Samaria was East, Ephraim's territory. All right. Don't quote me on it. I'm not trying to vain jangle, but I, I think that was Ephraim's inheritance. All right. And there was a, a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it. All right. The Syrians besieged Israel. Until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver. Now, these people knew the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. They was around here eating the, the, the head of donkeys, man. Eyeballs, nose. All right? You don't even have that much meat on a donkey's head. But first off, it's an unlawful food. So they let you know when our people are besieged, they're going to eat anything. They eat anything as it is, but they're going to eat anything. They're going to get so hungry. They're going to result to eating the head of a donkey. Okay. All right. If this happened in ancient time past where, the, where our people were more in tune with the most high. All right. They at least knew the most high's name. They knew, you know what I'm saying? They could call on them to the power of Yasharala. They still had the Hebrew tongue. All right. If this was befalling them in this time, just how much now where. The Most High is totally against our people. He was totally against them then, but they they don't know the name. They don't know the name to call on. They eating all these detestable foods. All right, it's gonna be worse in this day and time. Okay, and they was spending good money. All right, for forty pieces of silver, man, for the head of a fucking donkey, man, a detestable donkey. The Most High didn't create a donkey for us to eat, man. All right, then you're going to eat the head, the fucking skull, and, and this this the killer. And the fourth part of a cab of doves dung. So they was eating the shit of doves, man. They was making dove cakes, man. Eating the shit. Doves dung is bird shit, man. They were eating bird shit for five pieces of silver. All right, and I looked that up. That's two ounces of silver. Okay. All right. They were eating it for five. They were paying good money 
for fucking bird shit to eat. That's what a famine would do to you, man. You eat anything. So what what is to think you won't if all you can eat is a cat is, is a child that you won't do it. And, and look, it gets worse. We about to read. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon his, the wall, all right. They didn't say in Deuteronomy 28 that they were besiegers in our walls that we trust in. All right. And they cried. They are cried a woman unto him saying, help my Lord, O king. And he said, if Yahweh do not help thee, when shall I keep thee? And that's real. That's real. It's funny, but it's real. Okay. Out of the born floor, out of, or out of thine wine press. And the king said unto her, what ail of thee? And she answered, this woman said unto me, give thy son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. You see, that's what's going to proceed. You see, a lot of these big mouth, rolling neck, rolling eyes, lofty ass daughters of Zion, these nigga women that holler about, oh, I do this for the kids. I'm independent. I do it for the kids. They're going to eat their children. All right, all these people that walk past us and scoff at us and then go home, talking about they enjoying their family, talking about Jesus Christ is blessing them. All right, when, when all hell break loose, their animal instincts is going to kick in and they're going to be no different than a, a lion on a Serengeti or a hyena. All right, they're going to get so hungry, they're going to eat their ch children. They're going to resort to cannibalism. And we, when they resort to cannibalism, they ain't going to be going out looking for other people to eat. They're going to eat what's close to them and what's weak to them. And they're going to eat their children, man. They're going to go so hungry, they're going to eat their children. Their children is going to look, start looking like chicken fried steak to them, man. Because things done oh, for a time was what? Done for our learning. If it happened then, it'll happen now. Okay? It's nothing new under the sun. All right? History has a way of repeating itself. In fact, it's easier to have a famine here in America than it was in ancient times. All right? Because in ancient times, they grew their own food. They knew how to go out and hunt. All right? They knew how to fend for themselves. All right? They would go dig deep in the earth to get water. All right? They were more agriculturally, agriculturally advanced. Now, through technology and leaning on the government, if, if, if Walmart closed, what is the person going to do? All right? If Sam's Choice closed, what are they going to do? If Target closed, what are they going to do? If all these convenience stores and stuff closed, what are the people going to do? It's going to, uh, famine could be, see, a uh, Back then, they they had barns where they stored their shit. They stored stuff back then. All right. Here in America, some uh, at most, all right. If you when the electricity go out, so most a lot of people got a lot of food, meat in their deep freezers. They keep food in their deep freezer. But still, once the electricity go out and it's it's unfrozen, you got to eat that meat asap. And then. Our people don't know how to do like they did in ancient time past, uh, salt the meat down and put it in a room so it could dry out so you could, you could have it for a long while so you could preserve it naturally. So that meat's going to be gone bad in two, three days, okay? So you got to gorge on that meat. And then you got your non-perishable items. At most, let's say a person is well-stocked, they probably got a week and a half of non-perishable items. You got to eat every day. And you can have a full-fledged famine in America in two weeks' time. That's it. Two weeks' time, man. It's nothing. And the government knows this. The government does logistics, analytics, all right? They know this. They know this, and they're going to implement it, all right? They're going to implement it. And they're going to starve the people out and make the people come to them so people can get chipped. They're going to be like, here, you get this chip. We're going to give you a bag of a bag of flour. We're going to give you the uh, we're going to put some food stamps on you on your chip. And you can here, come here and purchase some food. OK. All right. This woman said it to me. Verse 28. Give thy son that we might eat him today and tomorrow. My son tomorrow. And we bawled my son. Wow. These women going to bawl and saute their kids, man, their children. 
and did eat him. All right. This happens in live action. This really happened. OK, this is doc. This is documented. Is the man uh, uh, is, is the most high man that he should repent. All right. If, if it is written, it happened. Or if it is written, it's going to happen. OK. This is a book of Lamentation, Morning and Woe. All right. You're reading Lamentation, Morning and Woe right now. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she hid her son. These are the type of things that's going to be going on in the coming days, man. You're going to have women making deals like that, man. All right. You're going to have women making deals like that and then go take their kid and hide. All right. And all of this is for transgression. Let me show you what it's for. All right. This is why the most high bring these things upon us. This is Jeremiah 14 and 15. All right. Therefore, say of Yahweh concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name and I sent them not. All right. Because the leaders of our people caused them to err. Yesterday was Martin Luther King's birthday. He caused our people to err. All right. And when our people err, you if the blind follow the blind, they both shall fall in the ditch. So our people follow the, the heads of our people who the most high have not sent. And they're going to fall in the ditch. And, they, and these things are going to befall them. Yet they said, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine, all those prophets shall be consumed. All right. And if you talk to our people, oh, that's not going to happen. This is America. This is the greatest. This is the land of pill, the plenty. A famine's not going to happen here. All right. And by your words, you shall be condemned. The Most High is going to make you eat those words. All right. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. All right. These things are going to happen because the people that the 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 people taking heed to the government to the philosophies that we've been taught to their poor pit pastors that tell them you can eat anything. Just pray over it. All right. All right. And there, and they shall have none to bury them. All right. Look at these calamities that's going to fall our people, family, the sword. And then our, the, our people going to be food for the fowls of the air. That's who's going to be full. That's who's going to be full in that day. The vultures. Then again, the vultures not going to be full because if they come down to eat, by, eat, eat the bodies, people going to be killing them, eating their asses. So the vultures going to have to, <laughs> the vultures going to have to stay away. They going, people going to be boiling their. <laughs> oh shit! And right now you can't pay nobody to eat a vulture, man. All right, even people that eat detestable foods won't eat a vulture. But in that day, man, that's going to be a delicacy. Anything. All right. Oh, and one thing Boosie said, he said, man, I eat anything. I eat a cop. I eat a human. The most high uh, 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 have him. Well, he'll eat all those words. He say, if the most high send me to hell for eating food, me and my whole household going to eat it because we going to eat pork. So he condemned his whole household. And so be it. Fuck him. Wicked ass nigga. All right, and they should have none to bury them. Them, their wives, that nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour wickedness on them. See, the Most High is going to kill whole households. All right? He's going to cut cut off lineages, line, lineages from being, uh, have a remembrance in the earth, man. He's going to cut off whole bloodlines because you got families out here, the whole family be wicked. And you go to their fucking family reunion, everybody wicked. The distant cousin wicked. The whole family wicked. The most high going to wipe out whole families, man. Whole generations, man. All right? Therefore, thou shalt say this word unto them. Let my eyes run down with tears night and day. Let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach and with a very grievous blow. And that's what's coming in these last days, the, in the end of the days. Jacob's trouble. All right. It's, we're giving visual depictions and shit, but is we can't we could do just the best we can do with our uh, mortal minds. It's going to be worse than what we can explain, man. All right. 
It's gonna it's gonna be ten times worse than what we saying is gonna happen. In fact, I got a precept for that. If I go forth in the field, then behold the slain. If I go forth in the field, then behold the slain with the sword. All right. And if I enter the city and behold them that are sick with famine, just anywhere you go, it's gonna be destruction and destruction, calamity upon a calamity. Yeah, both the prophet and the priest go about into the land that they know not. Has thou utterly rejected Yahweh? Has thou utterly re rejected Yahweh? He's asking you niggas, have y'all uh, utterly rejected me? All right. Have thy soul loathed Zion? All right. They will in that day. Why has thou smitten us and, and there is no healing for us? Because you rejected knowledge. You rejected the most high servants. Because during this time, when you read uh, Isaiah the 13 chapter, he said during the family, famine, my servants shall eat. All right. He said, my servants shall eat. See, we went in captivity. The most high say, I'm going to send the good and the bad into captivity. All right. But during this time, the good ain't going to suffer for the bad. All right. Right now, the good is suffering. Why everybody else is a good, good case. When everybody else get in bad case, then he's going to lift the, 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 the men of the Lord up. All right. We look for peace and there is no good. And for the time of healing and behold trouble. OK. And, that, and you're going to reap smoke and ashes, man. All right. All the way up to the missiles come. It's not going to lack. It's not going to subside. All right. It's going to go up, 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 up. All right. The hell is going to get the fire is going to get hotter, hotter, hotter and hotter. It's not going to subside at all. Once it stops, when the, once that faucet opens, it's going to just let loose. The most high is going to let the inhabitants of the earth have it. Like when you read Revelation seven, he told the angels to hold back the four winds. All right. Don't let the destruction come. When he let those angels let back the four winds, man, that shit not going to stop until our great king comes back. Because if he don't come back, the whole earth going to be destroyed, man. OK. All right. We acknowledge, oh, Yahweh, our weakness, wickedness and the equity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. But it's going to be too late. All right. When you read Proverbs, the one first chapter and say when they calamity come, then they will call out to me. But he said, I would not hear them. OK, let me get that. This is a. Uh, it's going to be too late when you call on him. Right now is the time to call on him. That's why the scriptures say, seek the most high while he may be found. The most high may be found right now. Right now, we see the, uh, it's, it's written in another place, a righteous man foresee of the destruction and he hide of himself. Right now, the way you hide yourself is you is you call out to your high about Shema to have mercy on you. You pray to him to protect your, your family. All right, you have to be a believer. You have to believe, man. That's why the scriptures say, uh, blessed of those that, believe without sin all right we don't see the famine now we don't see the calamities now but we believe your heart by shima was shy's word so right now you prepare for the family then what the scriptures say learn from the ant ye sluggard the ant in the summer in the time of plenty he prepares for the winter and when the time when everything's dead so when everything's dead, now you want to call on your howl. Now when the hell hits and, and it, it's nothing out here for you to uh, gain substances with and live, now you want to call on your howl. It's too late. The most high don't get down like that. The most high is not a crutch like that. That's nigga shit, man. This is, uh, I'm going I'm to go to 1 and 22. All right. This is uh, Proverbs. How long you sipping ones will love simplicity. And the scorns delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. All right. Turn ye at my reproof. All right. When he reproves you and he sends his, his prophets to you bedtimes, rising up early to teach you, uh, feed you with knowledge and wisdom. You turn at that reproof. You reject them. All right. So what have the most high to do with you niggas, man? Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I will make known my words unto you. And he's going to do that through giving you holy hell. Because I have called and refused and have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but you have set enough to my counsel and, and you were not none of my reproof. And this, if you're going to do that, you need to be doing that now. If you're going to uh, receive his counsel, receive his reproof. All right. And if you're going to, when his hand is stretched out, you're going to take his hand and, and cleave to him 
You need to be doing that now, okay? Not when the calamities come. And when, and when your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind and when distress and anguish come upon you, now you want to call on, out on to him? Let's see what he's going to say. Then shall you call on me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So when the famine come and you looking at your, your child like a, uh, like a, a Salisbury steak, when you're looking at your child like a, a nice piece, fresh piece of salmon, all right? Now you want to call on your howl so he can stop you from eating your child. He's not going to listen to you, okay? He said he's going to laugh at your calamity. When you call him, hell, y'all bust your mouth, shout hell. Oh, now you know the name. What happened to Jesus Christ? Oh, now you want to call on his name. He said he's going to mock. And the way he's going to mock, you're not going to hear an audible voice from heavens going, ah, ha, ha, ha. He's going to mock you through his prophets, through the men you ridiculed, you scoffed, all right? Through the men you killed, man. You tried to kill, man. The men you held sometimes in derision and counted them to be nothing, man. All right? Counted their end to be nothing. He's going to let them laugh at you. As you laughed at them, he's going to let them laugh at you. All right, because the most high is all about recompense. He's all about re, re, um, retribution, man. He said that's the faith and the patience of the saints. OK, to bind their kings with feathers. All right. And as it pertains to the nation of Israel, to, to do the nation of Israel as they done us, man. The wicked, the two thirds, give them recompense on their head because who, who had Yahweh Shemaim shot me? Our great king put the devil. Who bought him to the Romans? His own people, man. Who killed the prophets? Their own people, man. And it's gonna happen again. Okay. It's nothing new under the sun, man. All right. I'll get one more precept. Uh, this is first Kings chapter eight. I'm going to start at verse 46. No, I'm going to start at, yeah, I'm going to start at 46. All right, here we go. First Kings eight and 46. You know what? I want to go up to 36. All right. I mean, I'm going to come down to 46. It's 30 something. Oh, what a scripture. No, it's 37. All right, here we go. First Kings 8 and 37. If there be in the land famine, and if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or if there be the caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made of any man or by all the people of Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread of his hands towards the house. All right, and we just said, when that shit happens in our day and time, all right, the Most High is not going to hear you. He's not going to He's not going to uh, deliver you. And he say, when you buy, when you read Jeremiah the 16th chapter, he say, when you die, nobody's going to bury you and nobody's going to lament for you, man. People just going to walk over your dead corpse holding their fucking nose, man, for the stink that come up from your ass. All right? Here we go. Now, this is the point of the matter I want to bring out. All right. This is uh, 1 Kings 8 and 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sin of not. And thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away, them away captives into the land of the enemy far near. Now, that, that prophecy has been fulfilled, man. That's why you learn. All right. That's what the most High do. When we come against him. He sends our enemies against us and let them have their way with us. All right. But that's, this is the last time an enemy will ever lower it over us. It won't happen ever again to from eternity to eternity to eternity, because this is the end of the Esau's world is the beginning of our world. OK, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they have carried away captives and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land that they're carried them captive saying we have sinned and we have done perversely. We have committed weakness. This is what you're supposed to be doing right now. 
All right. This is what we're this is the spirit we supposed to be in right now. Our record always pushes out, man. Read Psalms 51 daily. All right. Pray it daily. All right. This is what we're supposed to be doing right right now. Reading Psalms 51 once or twice a day, man. All right. And so return unto thee with all thy mind, with all thy soul and with all that in the land of their enemies. And that's what we're doing right now. You see the brothers in various cities coming out week in and week out teaching, doing videos all through the week. All right. And we're seeking your how about with all our might, with all our power, with all our mind, man, which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward thy land. And we face these and we pray, man, we do this daily. All right. This is what you have to do. So these calamities don't befall you. Okay. It's chess. It ain't checkers. When you play che checkers, uh, the checker ass niggas going to befall themselves. They're going to die. But see, people that play chess in the spirit of chess, chess, you make one move, but you look at three or four moves down the board. It's like it's like you're prophesying when you play chess. All right. The most high is a chess player. OK, so he teaches men how to be chess players. All right. So when you see these, what's going to happen three and four steps down the board, a chess, a checker player don't see that. They make that move right in front of them. But a, a, a chess player, we, we looking at what's going to happen three or, three or four months down the road, all right, in the coming days. And we're preparing ourselves. We learn from the ant, all right? The, the ant prepares itself for what's to come, all right? So that's what you wise men should do if you want to be wise, okay? Which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. And when you pray, face the east, man. Now, you could go through all out your day praying, you know what I'm saying? When you're at the job, praying and you're praying to yourself and stuff. But when you get in your chamber and go home, man, you do what Daniel did when he was in the uh, in the land of Babylon, man. He he went to his room and, and opened his windows and faced the east, man. He faced Jerusalem, and that's what you do when you pray. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place and maintain their cause. And that's now is the time to do it. Not when the calamities fall, not when the indignation comes. Now is the time to do it. Okay. And the doors of mercy are closing. The doors on the ark are literally closing. They're closing slow. They're slowly closing, but they're closing, but there is, it does, it's not much room for them to close. Okay. The most high is giving you a chance. His hand is still stretched out. All right. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee and all thy transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee and give them compassions before them who carried away, carried them captive that they may have compassion on them. All right. So this is what you to do, man. You ought to bring your supplications to how about Shema Mashiach, pray and fast, get yoked with a GMS camp near you. All right. Have a self-analysis of yourself and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and seek the most high way he may be found. All right. Let me get that. Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah. 55 and six. And it reads. All right. Seek your highway way he may be found and call up for him on upon him while he is near. The most high can be found right now. Right now you can find prophets with the knowledge of Yahweh Bashima Washai, man, that can rightly divide the scriptures and show you the doctrine of life. All right? And lay you out that path that you have to follow. All right? From the elders of Great Millstone to their fruit, they're scattered across the globe. GMS is global, man. So you have light bearers all throughout and money changes all throughout the planet. All right? So with that, I want to give infinite honors to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekar Kodash. I want to give double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow laborers in Yahweh Shai, Kwame, Asherah, Baba, Baba.